Hope everyone's doing well this morning. So we um, today are going to work on adaptability. And so, oh yeah. Thank you. Um, and if for some reason, like someone can hop on if you, if my microphone goes out or something. Um, but it's been working well for all of the online classes. All right, so um, we are going to work on adaptability in our practice today. And I know that um, during this time, it's like it's really challenging what this does to you, to your habits, like to what we do on a daily basis. And so if we can create adaptability in our bodies and through our practice, then hopefully we can use that in our life to help us become more adaptable to these changes that we're having uh, to take on. So we're going to get started on the back. If you have like a block or even like a, a throw pillow can work, Anything that you can put in between the legs, just something um, sturdy, grab it. If not, no worries. So we're gonna get started on the back, bringing the feet about hip width apart, and just bring your hands to somewhere on the torso. Take a big inhale, and exhale, release it out. Feel yourself arrive on your mat. Notice your breath. Not judging or critiquing, just becoming aware of how you feel today. How the breath is moving this morning. So as we move in our practice, um, there's a, it's a lot of focus on our core. And so with the hands on the torso, just notice underneath your hands. And so our core is really everything from the tops of the shoulders to containing the pelvis. So as we move in our practice, we're going to be focused on this space and finding stability here and control so that we can find mobility in the rest of the body, which we're gonna get into some hips and uh, shoulder stuff. Pressing firmly into your feet, lifting up for a low bridge. Now your hands are already on the floor, so slide them down to your hip point. And so these are your two pelvic points at the, at the front of your hips or pelvis. Press into them using the hands or the fingers and then use your glutes to fire back into those hands. It's just for some feedback there. If you're not quite sure if the glutes are firing, take the hands back to your glutes. They're yours, you can touch them. Um, for us then getting the glutes to fire. You have an option here to lift the toes if you'd like to. So keeping the, the ball of your foot down and just lifting the toes up. You'll feel an activation on the front side of the legs. And perhaps a pull on the bottoms of the feet. Press a little bit more firmly into the mounds of your big toe the base of the toe and lift a little bit more, getting the glutes to fire. Reach the hands up to the sky as you hold this low bridge and pull back on your right fingers using your left hand. Press firmly through the heel of the right hand as you reach it towards the sky. You could keep it there or reach it overhead. Notice your inhale. And your exhale. 
Bring it back to the ceiling and switch. So pull back on the left fingers using your right hand. Press firmly through the heel of the hand. Leave it towards the sky or stretch it overhead. Take a full breath in and out. Bring the hands back to the sky and then slowly release, but roll through the wrists on the way down. So you're rolling through both sides as the hands come back down to the mat and lowering your hips down. Taking the fingers now into the hip crease. So where your pelvis and your thighs meet, that's your hip crease, that's your hip joint. We're gonna march the feet. So you're just alternating lifting one foot off the ground and then the opposite side. So what this is showing us is hip flexion. So when we pull it in, that's hip flexion. And we're becoming aware of the fact that the pelvis doesn't move when we're trying to move at the hip joint. So pelvis stays steady, it's on the mat. We're just moving our thighs. So femurs inside the pelvis. We're gonna take this up a notch. If you'd like, you can lift into bridge and do the same thing. If you're more comfortable staying on the ground, stay here. Otherwise, press into the feet, lift up. Fingers can still be there for feedback and then you're alternating. And so this is increasing, whichever leg is lifting, you're increasing the demand on the opposite glute. Again, as part of our core. Notice the weight shift and how you can become adaptable to this movement, how the tissues in the body and their spot. Staying connected to your breath, So a couple more each side. And then set both feet down and lower the hips down. Now, if you have a block or a prop, place that in between the uh, knees. If you don't have it, that's fine too. And the knees are gonna come up and over your hips. So knees right over your hip points. Hands come behind the head. Elbows lead up towards the ceiling. Take a breath in, and on your exhale, lift the shoulder blades off the mat. So you're going to lift up, elbows lead towards the sky or towards your knees. Slightly hug the object in between the legs. And take a look down at the front of your body and try and pull your front ribs towards one another, actively pressing down. So that's how we get into the deep abdominals, the, the muscles work that work to stabilize our core. Inhale to lower, exhale and lift. Again, shoulder blades all or part lift off the mat, contain the front of the body and press down, lightly hug your object. Extend the left leg to the sky, pressing through the heel of the foot, pulling the toes towards you. Continue to lift. Then re-bend your knee, inhale to lower, exhale and lift. Again. Again, check in with the front and then extend the right leg towards the sky, press through the heel of the foot and lift. Lightly hug the object. Notice that the pelvis is staying neutral, so we're not moving through the pelvis by curling into posterior tilt or anterior tilt. And then inhale to lower, re-bend your knee, exhale and lift. All right, left leg goes towards the sky. Take a small turn to the left, just about one to two inches. And so we're increasing the demand now on the obliques, which also helps us stabilize. Press through the heel, pull the toes towards you, and then bring it back through center, re-bend the left knee, inhale to lower. Exhale and lift. Right leg extends to the sky. Lift and then small turn to the right. Just about one to two inches. You're still containing the front body and then trying to pick the right shoulder up as you take the small turn. Rebend the right knee, come back through center. Inhale to lower. Exhale and lift. 
Extend the left leg to the sky. Small turn to the left. And now take your right leg into internal rotation. So you're trying to spin the front of the thigh towards your left leg, towards the object. And the right foot goes towards the right. Again, increasing that to man, you'll feel that stronger core connection through that. And then bring it back through center, rebend the knees, inhale to lower, exhale and lift. Right leg reaches up to the sky, small turn to the right, hold here, lightly hug the object and then spin on the left um, leg. So it's going into internal rotation as you're lifted, feeling that strong activation in the front body. And then bring it back through center, rebend both knees. Inhale to lower. It's our last one. Exhale and lift. Oof. Left leg reaches to the sky. Small turn to the left. And then internal rotation on the right leg. You can add on the right arm reaching past the left leg if you'd like. I would just go extended, reaching. Bring it back through center. Hand behind the head. Inhale to lower. Don't stay. Exhale and lift. Oof. Right leg reaches to the sky. Small turn to the right. Take your left leg in the internal rotation. Hug the block, press down. Option to take the left arm past your right leg if you'd like to. Keep lifting the right shoulder blade. You got this, hug your object. Internal rotation on the left leg. And bring it back through center, hands behind the head and lower. Whew. All right, object comes out to the side. Let the feet come down, wiggle the feet about mat distance apart, and then let your knees go to the left, but keep intention in the pose. So you're gonna press through the inner arch of the right foot and engage your right glute. Arms can stay where they are, or you could reach them overhead like we did in bridge. Knees go back to the sky. Allow them to go to the right, press through the inner arch of the left foot, left glute fires, arms can reach overhead or stay where they are and breathe. Bring the knees back to the sky, pull them in one at a time so eventually both legs are in towards you. You can rock forward and back or roll to your side to come up. So your choice, we're gonna come all the way on to hands and knees here. And so as you find your table, check that the wrists are under the shoulders, knees are underneath your hips. Take a couple cat cows here. So on your inhale, Bring your heart forward. There's still this light engagement in the um, abdominals so that we don't dump into the back. On your exhale, round, curl the tailbone towards your knees, press the hands towards the front of your mat. And then on your breath, adding in any movement, any other movement if you'd like to here. that once more. And then come back to your regular table. Okay, so wrists under the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Think about what we worked on our back. So front line is pulling up and then everything's moving in towards your midline to help stabilize your torso. From here, reach the left leg behind you toes are on the mat first. We want the pelvis to stay steady like we did on the back and then lift the leg. Bend your left knee. Again, torso stay strong, pelvis stay steady, then pull the knee under you out to the side and towards the back of the room. So we're finding these hip circles here, mobilizing through the hip joint by finding stability in the torso. Reverse your circle. It doesn't have to be big. You just want to control the movement and keep it at the hip joint so that you're truly working it. Creating space. Set the left knee down. 
Notice the difference in the sides. Then extend the right leg back. Check that we didn't move anywhere else, just the leg extending back. Then bend your right knee. Knee reaches back. Keep picking up the front of the body. And then it goes out to the side, under the hip, and back. Firmly pressing to the hands. Notice if the face is like falling towards the ground. If that's happening, lift the back of the head up so that the back of the head, shoulder blades, and pelvis are in one line. Reverse your circle. And then set the right knee down. Lower to the forearms. Elbows come underneath the shoulders. Hands um, or forearms can stay parallel. You could also let the hands come together and clasp if you'd like. Okay. Tuck the toes under. Allow the head to hang heavy and then lift up to your dolphin. So here you're working the proximal muscles for your core. And as you lift the hips up, remember that's the peak of the the pose, so you're trying to create as much length and lift in the spine as possible. So we can accommodate that by pulling in the front of the body, bending the knees as much as you'd like. Grounding firmly in the right leg, lift the left up. So you might need to bend the right knee more. Now circling the left leg, so the whole leg is moving. Similar to what we did in quadruped, but the knee was bent before. And reverse the circle. And then set your left foot down, opposite side. So stay grounded in the left foot, lift the right. And circle here. So this is a longer lever with the leg um, fully extended. So if that's too much, you can go back to the knee bent and do it that way. Reverse your circle. And set your right foot down. Lower the knees and find your child's pose. So hips go back towards the heels. Arms are extended here. Take a breath in. And a breath out. Walk the hands over to the left as far as you can take them, breathing space into the right side of your body. If you'd like, hands can plant side by side. You can think about pushing away with the left hand, pulling back with the right. Walk the hands back through center and over to the right side. You want a little more activation, plant the hands side by side, push away with the right, and imagine you could pull back with the left. Notice your inhale and your exhale. Walk the hands back through center, pull yourself forward, find table, and then curl the toes under, lift up to your first down dog. Notice the stability, so you can walk the feet out here, bending into one knee and then the opposite side. Notice the stability that you have from um, what's called the reset, so from what we did starting our practice until now. We have this control, the stability through our core. Again, we're not sinking in the shoulders here. You're lifting, so um, we're not collapsing in the chest. So, so front of the body is lifting with you. Start to walk the feet forward. So it's the same thing. You're lifting one heel and then the opposite side, but take your time to come all the way up to the hands. And as you get closer, bend the knees as you need to. And maybe even lifting up one of the fingertips. Coming to a forward fold at the front of your mat. Ground firmly into the feet. Inhale, reach your arms forward and up to the sky. Then interlace the fingers, press the palms up. Yep, press the palms up. 
exhale, release the hands, hinge at the hips to fold forward. So hands come down or fingertips come down. Step your right foot back and then lower the right knee down. Untuck your right toes so you're pressing into the top of the foot. Reach the arms forward and up. So here, press firmly into the top of the foot, feeling that lengthening all along the front of the leg. So as you're pressing in on the right leg, think about pulling back with the left. So it's planting the left heel and imagine you could pull it back towards you. How much length can you create in your body? Take a big inhale. On your exhale, bring the hands down and step it back into plank from here. Lower the knees down and lower all the way down, keeping the head of the arm bones lifted so they're not dropping to the mat. Pull forward for your cobra. So chest pulls through the upper arms. Exhale, lift up to your down dog. From here, ground into your left foot and step the right foot forward. So right foot steps forward, lower the left knee and the top of the foot. Pressing firmly into the top of the foot, feeling that lengthening all along the front of the left leg. Left glute is working, arms reach forward and up. Create length in your torso. Pulling the front ribs in like we worked in our core work. Lift up a little bit more, and then the hands come to plan. Step it forward and fold. Inhale, reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge at the hip. So hips go back. Remember that hip flexion we were working. Fingertips or hands plant, and then step the left foot back. Left knee lowers, but this time keep the toes tucked, and then arms reach up. So now tucking the toes is going to get the left glute to fire a little bit more. As you reach up, take hold of your left wrist. So right below the hand, in between the hand and the forearm, there's this space. Pull or hold that space as you pull up to the sky. Again, check in with the front ribs. You need to pull in so that we have this neutral pelvis hugging the outer hips together. Lift. Release your hands down and step it back into plank. Lower the knees, keep the head of the arm bones lifted as you lower. Pull forward, cobra, exhale, down dog. Ground into the right foot, step the left foot forward. The right knee lowers, keep your right toes tucked as you lift up. So first, reaching to the sky, right glute is on, and then take hold of your right wrist using your left hand. Pull up. So this is called wrist gapping. So you're just holding right there, creating length in that whole right side. If you're losing your balance, think about the left leg pulling back towards the right. Release the hands down and step forward to the front of the mat. Inhale, reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Okay, fingertips come down. Now step the right foot back. Bend the right knee a little bit and come up into a high lunge this time. So similar to what we did on the ground, we still want our neutral pelvis. So that's why I invite the knee to bend first. Find your neutral pelvis and then maybe the leg straightens a little bit more. It's likely not going to be fully straight because then we tip in the pelvis and we lose that connection to the front of the body, our core there. So finding that and then reaching up towards the sky. Same ideas, pull the front ribs in as you lift. Take one more inhale. Exhale, bring your hands down, step it back into your plank. Lower the knees and then lower all the way down. Inhale, cobra, pull the chest forward. Exhale, down dog. Right foot steps forward. Lift up, bending in the back knee. So come up and establish neutral first. So as you arrive, you might even take your hands around the pelvis to check 
what it's doing. From there, hug the outer hips together, reach the arms to the sky when you're ready. Pulling in, creating that lift. Notice your inhale, your exhale. One more breath. Take an inhale. On your exhale, hands come forward, step forward to the front of the mat. Inhale, reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. So they go back, bend the knees as much as you need to. Hands come down, left foot steps back. Bend slightly into the left knee and then lift up crescent lunge. It's our last round here. This time we're going to leave the left arm lifted and sweep the right hand to the back. So it's going to come like to your sacrum, which is the base of the spine. Now pull the front body in towards your right hand as much as you can. And then that's going to create even more length in the left leg. Lift up through the left arm. You might take a slight reach towards the right, keeping the pelvis neutral, keeping the front of the body engaged. You could also have the left knee down if you'd like. Reach both arms up, inhale. Exhale the hands down, step it back into your plank. Lower the knees, keep the head of the arm bones lifted as you lower. Pull yourself forward for your cobra. Exhale, down dog. Last one here. Step your left foot forward. Right knee bends a little bit as you lift up to your high lunge. Hands anywhere first. And then sweep the left hand behind you to your sacrum. Right arm reaches to the sky. So we're using the hand on the back for feedback. So press into it. You can even take the fingers to the glute to make sure that that's firing as you lift up through the right arm. Here you can stay vertical or take it slightly to the left. On your next inhale, reach both arms up to the sky. Exhale your hands down and step forward for your fold. Inhale, reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. All right, so from here, the right foot steps back. As if we were going into that crescent lunge, bend your right knee so it's like just over your mat. Pull yourself back for a runner stretch. So we're gonna lift the left toes, keeping the mound of the big toe on your mat like we did in the bridge. You can work towards the left leg straightening, and this is where a block or a prop could come in handy if you want it. So it's like a, call it a runner stretch. Your, the right knee is bent and the left leg is working towards straightening. Keeping the pelvis neutral and the core is still lifting. So you're, you're still creating that pull in the front of the body. And you'll notice the effect on the back when you find that. Creating space in the back fascial line. Take one more breath here. Now lower the right knee coming into a low lunge. So right knee lowers. Arms sweep up to the sky. Okay, take a breath. Then reach your arms forward. Protract the shoulder blades. So that means move the shoulder blades apart from one another and then retract or pull them back. Protract, reach them apart from one another. Retract, pull them towards one another. Take that a couple more times. And then find the middle. So that would be the shoulder blades in neutral. So they're not protracted and they're not retracted. You feel the shoulder blades on the back ribs. Arms are reaching forward as if you were, um, if the hands were planted on a wall right in front of you. Okay, hold the shoulder blades on the back. Bring the hands down, wiggle your left foot to the left, and then sweep the left leg back. So we're back um, where we first started in quadruped with the left leg extended. Bend your left knee, find your hip circles here. Just a couple each direction. So once you have two, reverse it. 
and extend your left leg back. Leave the right hand where it is and right knee. Open up for your modified side plank. So left arm and left leg lift. You can keep the left leg lifted if you'd like or lower it down. Left arm strokes backward. So you reach it past your ear, behind you, and then by your side. Check what the pelvis is doing. We want it to stay neutral. We want to keep that engagement in the front line. Here, just mobilizing through the left shoulder. You're working, stabilizing the right hip. Take one more reach. And then bring your left hand to your left hip. Bend your left knee and step your left foot forward. Bring both hands to the inside of the foot, side lunges to the right side of the mat. So lift your right knee up, pivot so that both, all the toes are towards the side of the mat and then bend into your right knee. Straighten and bend into the left knee. Now if you'd like here, you can add a twist as you alternate from side to side. So when you bend into the right knee, the left hand can stay down and the right arm can lift. And then you would just take it to the opposite side. And here, choose for yourself. Go as fast or as slow as it feels good in your body. We'll take one more each side. Ending on the right leg, so bend your right knee. Okay, now heading back to the front of the mat for a runner stretch, which is where we started this part, this sequence. So turn to the front of the mat, bend your right knee, work towards straightening the left leg. Now shifting all of the weight into the left foot, lift the right, finding this variation of a standing split. You can take your left hand or thumb into your left hip, hip crease and press it back to create more flexion in the left hip. Keep your spine long and the pelvis neutral. So if you feel like you're curling, that's when we bend more into the left leg and use those fingers to press back. One more breath. Step both feet together. Inhale, reach forward and up. Interlace the fingers, press the palms to the sky. Exhale, release it as you hinge to fold. Right foot stays where it is and the left foot steps back, finding a runner stretch on this side. So bend your left knee so that it's almost coming towards your mat. Almost coming, almost to the mat and pull your hips back, work towards straightening the right leg. Use a block if you'd like to. Keep lifting up in the front of the body. The option is to lift the toes if you'd like. And this whole right leg is active, especially the top. So your quad is really firing. And if the hands are planted, feeling the energy up from the ground and that helps um, strengthen the core even more because we're feeling that connection there take one more breath come into your low lunge so move forward lower the left knee reach the arms all the way up so we're in a low lunge on the right leg reach your arms forward protract and retract. So you're feeling the shoulder blades move on the back. If you have a hard time connecting to that, you can take a few shoulder rolls first and think about, or even like take one hand and feel the shoulder blade move on both sides. So giving yourself some more feedback if you need it. Now find a neutral, so you'll feel the shoulder blades on the back. Check what the head is doing. So Pull the back of the head back if you're stretching um, forward. Feel strong in the hands and in the arms and that connection to the shoulders. Bring the hands down to the mat. 
right leg reaches back. So you're in a quadruped with the right leg reaching back. Bend your right knee, find your hip circles, couple in each direction. And you'll notice from the, the, what we did, last one, that if you feel the shoulder blades on the back, you're not overly rounding, which is what we, some of us tend to do. Now reach the right leg back, modified side plank. So left hand and left knee stay down, the right arm and the right leg lift. Keep the right leg lifted or set it down on the ground. We're gonna backstroke the right arm so it reaches past your ear, behind you, and then beside you. And create as much movement as you can. So it's not just the arm moving, it's your whole shoulder girdle on that side. So feel the shoulder blade move here as well. Last one. Bring your right hand to your right hip. Lift the right leg if you had it on the ground. Bend your knee, hip flexion, and then step your right foot forward. Left side of the mat for our side lunges. So bend into one side and then the opposite side. So you're just shifting side to side. Option to add the twist. Option to hold. Like make this your own. You can always hold, take a few breaths, maybe even of the leg that's extended, you can lift the toes. It just depends what you need in your practice today. Okay, last couple here. I switch so you can see me. Now turn to the front of the mat. Find your runner stretch. Adjust the feet as you need to. Bend into the left knee. Pull the right toes towards you. So now we're preparing this tissue, helping it create more adaptability before we load the leg. Take one more breath. Load your right leg. So when we go to put all the weight into the, the right foot, bend your right knee. But when we bend it, we're not bringing it towards to come over the toes. We're bending to pull the thigh back. So lift the leg and then think hip flexion. You can take your right fingers into that hip crease and push it back. Keep the core engaged so that you can keep the length in the spine. And if the hands can be flat on the mat, again, you can strengthen that core connection here and think about you know, the palms pulling towards your right foot, working the shoulders a little bit more. And then step both feet together. Inhale, reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Hands plant right under the shoulders. Step back into your plank or hop back if you'd like to. Option to lower the knees, otherwise lower halfway or all the way, finding the back bend of your choice. Pull the hands towards the toes and then come up and back to your down dog. Bend the knees, step or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, reach forward and up. Strong, exhale, hinge at the hips. Hands right under the shoulders, step or hop back into your plank. Check that the shoulder blades are on the back, we're not overly rounding. Lower, pull forward, exhale, down dog. One more time, bend into the knees, step or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hinge at the hips, core stays active here, front and back pulling together, hands plant, step back into your plank, glutes are on, lower, pull forward, exhale, down dog. So we arrive in our down dog, we're going to lower the knees and then lower to the forearms. Curl the toes back under and then lift up to your dolphin. If you need to, you can always find down dog instead. 
otherwise try it so knees are slightly bent hips are lifted you're pulling up picking up the front of the body lift the left foot lift and lower the right heel okay now keep your right heel lifted bend the right knee and circle your left leg and reverse so again, it doesn't have to be big movements. You're just mobilizing through that hip joint because you are so strong and stable in the rest of the body. Step the feet together and then walk it back. Find your forearm plank. Shoulders right over the elbows. Lower down, locust. Arms are by your side. Pick yourself up from your mat but keep lifting in the front of the body to help create the length in the back, especially the low back. Now hands right behind the shoulders, curl the toes under. Notice that the head of the arm bones are lifted. They're right in line with your torso. Glutes are on, lift up to your plank. So you're gonna press firmly into the hands, lift up to plank. Find your down dog. Left leg lifts from here, so step the right foot slightly closer, and then step the left foot forward, finding your warrior two. So left toes towards the front of the mat, right toes towards the side as you come up. For the neck, if you want to keep it more neutral today, you can just gaze so that it stays in line with the torso. Your choice. As you arrive, notice how the hips feel. You need to let the right hip lower a little bit more than the left, or to even it out, I should say. On your next inhale, lift the left, flip the left hand, and reach up towards the sky, reversing your warrior. So right hand can come anywhere on the back leg as you lift up through the left side of your body. Pick up the left ribs, pick up your left shoulder blade so that you're creating as much space as you can there. Coming into warrior variation, bring your forearm to your thigh, reach the right arm up and past your ear and pull in. So you can create a lot of space in the back and on the side if you pull. So this is where like core is a big part of our practice. We can create more space by utilizing it. So keep pulling in. Take one more breath. Now come to the side of the mat, straightening both uh, legs. So we're going to side of the mat, straighten both legs, arms come out into a T. Turn towards the back of the mat. It's a lunge position with the feet. So you're gonna adjust so that the right toes and left toes are towards the back, but now you're in the ball of the left foot. And then lean forward, arms are by your side. If that's not for you, hands can come to the top of the thigh. Here, okay, either one, arms by your side or on the top of the thigh. Pull in even more with the front of the body. Contain the front ribs, so imagine your back was on your mat. That's how much we're pulling in and even lifting the back of the head. Loading the right leg, we're gonna lift into airplane. So left leg lifts here. Bend the right knee as much as you need to. You can hold it here. You can also alternate that move, lifting the left leg and lowering it back down. Or if you want this fun challenge, we're gonna bend the left knee and then circle your left hip. So it's this wonderful challenge for balance, but this is how we create adaptability. Reverse your circle. Ooh. All right, so bring your left foot behind your right. Bring the hands down and find a seated twist towards the right. So you're gonna lower, come on to your bottom, and then you're a seated twist towards the right. You can, so I'll face you for a second, you can lengthen the left leg forward and find the same thing. So once we're here, we're gonna roll the shoulders. So feel the shoulder blades move on the back. Pick them up, 
alternating side to side. Good, and then bring the hands down to the left, lift up, and then walk it all the way back to the front of the mat. So this is the fun part. Well, maybe, if you wanna be like a kid. Walk it all the way to the front. Inhale, reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Bring the hands down to plant, step it back into your plank, and then lower to your forearms from here. Walk the feet in, find your dolphin. Ground firmly into the forearms, lift up the front of the body. Now lift the right leg and lift and lower the left heel. Okay, now hold it, lift the left heel, bend as much as you need to in the left knee. Remember, left front of the hip is like, is picking up. So you're creating hip flexion in that left hip. Now, right leg circles. So you're gonna bring it out to the side, down and back and up. Reverse your circle. Good, and then step both feet together, walk it back, find your forearm plank. Again, shoulders right over the wrists. Breathe in, exhale, lower down, locus, arms by your side, and lift. Pull in with the front of the body, back of the head is lifted so that we have a sense of length in the cervical spine of the neck. Hands right behind the shoulders. Keep the head of the arm bones lifted. Curl your toes under, glutes are on. Lift up to your plank. And then back to your down dog. Step the feet slightly closer, lift the right leg up from here. And then step your right foot forward. Come to your warrior two on this side. So as you lift, find that sense of settling in the pelvis. Notice here, could you create more space from your ribs to the pelvis just by utilizing your strength? So it's a sense of pulling in and lifting up through the side waist. Reverse your warrior, reach the right hand to the sky, lift up, and again, lift up through the right side, lift the right scapula, reach towards the ceiling. Coming to your warrior variation, right forearm comes down, left arm sweeps forward, creating space in the left side. Again, pull in, in the front. If your neck is bothering, you can even take the gaze down towards the mat. One more full breath. Transitioning to the back, so we're gonna straighten both legs, arms come out onto a T, and then turn towards the back, leaning lunge. So arms are by your side as you're hinging over your left leg. Now, if it feels like you got here and you're rounding in the, pel in the, the low back and the pelvis, come up, press the hands into the thigh, or like we have been, the thumb into the hip crease, and then pull it back more, keep, pulling in in the front, knitting the front ribs together so that you create this length in the torso and the pelvis is, is moving with you. Now you can stay here or lift the right leg. Bend the left knee as much as you need to and at, if we bend it a lot, remember you're not headed towards the toes. When you're bending it, you're pulling your femur bone back. Now bend the right knee, so this is the fun part. Knee comes down, out to the side, and back. You can even take the hands um, to the pelvis or to the low back, like we did earlier for some feedback. Reverse your circle. This is our big challenge today. You guys got this, pull in. And then set the right foot behind the left. Then both knees turn to the left side of the mat, seated twist roll through the shoulders. Yes. 
So you might hear some like cracking or um, what sounds like Rice Krispies. That's our fascia and it's a little bit dried up, which is why we're moving it because movement creates the hydration that it needs. Okay, so we're gonna to turn towards the back of the mat and then come towards the front of the mat for quadruped. So you're gonna to turn to the back, crawl it forward, hands plant, and then both knees lower. Now, bringing um, yourself into cow. So you're gonna bring your heart forward, tailbone goes to the sky. Feel the shoulder blades on the back, okay? Now bring the, the head back into neutral, so your gaze is down, but the back of the head's lifted. Pull up in the front of the body and bring the pelvis back to neutral. So we're just creating a little more strength, feeling the shoulder blades on the back. So again, you're bringing the rest of the spine back to neutral, pulling in the front of the body, creating a neutral pelvis. Now step it back into your plank from here. Again, feel the shoulder blades on the back. And then once you step back, feel the glutes engage. Back of the head's lifted. So this is how we want our plank to feel. Shoulder blades in neutral, core really fired up. Take one more breath. Now pivot your heels to the right. So you can wiggle the feet a little bit wider. Pivot the heels to the right. Left arm lifts. Lift up and create space in the left side by taking the left arm overhead if that's for you. Take one more breath. Find your plank. So this is the challenging part, right? Can we become adaptable back to that strong and steady plank? Feel the shoulder blades on the back, back of the head's lifted, core is engaged, glutes are on. Now pivot the heels to the left, toes to the right, side plank. Shoulder is right over your left wrist. And you can always modify this by having your left knee down. Take one more breath. And then last plank of your class. Find those shoulder blades on the back, back of the head's lifted. It's really nice sometimes too to come back to that same um, quadruped, feel the shoulder blades on the back, back of the head lift, and then step it back. You can do that too. One more breath in, exhale it out. Lower the knees down, find child's pose, hips go back towards the heels as those arms extend forward. Breathe in and sigh it out. Walk the hands to the left, and feel the difference um, from our first child's pose. The strength, the adaptability that you created in your body. Walk the hands back to your center and over to the right. And then bring those hands back to center. Um, pull yourself forward just enough to swivel the feet over to one side and then come on to your bottom. Bringing the legs in front of us, bring your left foot, um, left shin right in front of the, the hip. And then bring the right either in front of or on top. So it's your choice in front of or on top. And if you have a prop and you wanna bring it in front, the uh, leg can just be on that. Now bring the fingers into that hip crease and hinge forward. So just another way to give us some feedback. So our pelvis is coming with us. Our hands can come anywhere that you'd like. Notice the inhale. The exhale. Okay. 
So we want to create adaptability because change is the only thing that is constant. So how we respond to that change is by changing ourselves, right? So we find a variety of ways to move, to work our muscles, the tissues in our body so that they can become adaptable as well. Walk the hands back towards you. Bring the hands behind you just for a moment, pressing the fingers or the palms into the mat and lift up through your chest. I'd bring it back to neutral and then we'll switch sides. So moving that prop, if you took it there, you can unwind the legs, take a couple movements if you want to. And then bring your left leg in and right comes in front of or on top. Hands or fingers into that hip crease so that you're truly moving at the hip joint as you come forward. Hands can be wherever you'd like. Perhaps you take a cleansing breath here. <sighs> Let it out of the mouth. Relax the muscles in the face, soften the jaw. In these last few moments and breaths here, can you soften just a bit more? Could you focus on your breath for those last few here? On your exhale, lifting back up, bringing the hands behind you or fingertips or palms, lift up through the chest. Leaving the weight back towards the hands, unwind your legs, bringing the feet out wide and then knees go side to side. Start to bring the legs closer together and then hands reach forward as you roll to the back. Pulling the knees in as you arrive, giving, giving them a nice squeeze. And then setting the feet down, extending the legs long. If you want to make your way to a wall for legs up the wall for Shavasana, feel free to take that. Or if there's a different position you want, find it here. Finding a few moments of stillness, of peace for your Shavasana.
If you have the ability to stay longer, please do. Or if you're watching this on playback, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, deepen your breath, finding movements, the fingers, the toes, maybe wrist circles, ankle circles, or a full body stretch. And pulling the knees in and staying or rolling to your side. Pausing to say thank you to yourself. For taking this time on your mat to create adaptability. And lifting up into a seated position, we'll bring our hands together in front of us. This is from Kazuko Akura. Akura. You don't even want me to try it. I can post it on here. So the art of life lies in a constant readjustment to our surroundings. And remembering that um, when our surroundings are, are changing, then we have even more uh, responsiveness and change that we have to uh, adapt to. But we are resilient and we have the abilities in our bodies. Bringing um, our hands in front of us, I thank each one of you for allowing me to guide you in your practice today. Remember that you have this strength to adapt within you. So carry this with you off of your mat. We bow to 